Good morning and welcome back for another video on myself, Darren, HCB Class 1 driver here in the UK and it is bright and early, I say bright and early, it's dark and early really isn't it, 4am at the moment and a very nice and easy shift laid up for us for today. Plan of action, going down to Peterborough Solo, collecting on one of our brand new trailers and then bringing it back up. I'm not too sure if I've got backload yet to bring up with me or I'm coming up empty. Where possible though, we do like to try and come back with a full trailer so you're not really wasting fuel then are you? You're getting paid for both journeys, going down and then you're getting paid going up. Kev's already hooked up to one of our new trailers over there. So I don't know what time he started, if he's hooked up, ready to go up. 10 past four already got the nice blue lights out for the, the morning drive time has just hit half past four all the vehicle checks have been done and now to get to peterborough is 169 miles away and i'm looking about a four hour drive Woohoo! luckily for me though the m6 southbound is currently open and it's the northbound that's closed I think they're just about to reopen it at the moment. So you've got the safety truck there on the right hand side. You might be able to see all the traffic. Going very slowly. Oh, that's one of the downsides about working so early. Got road closures all ready. So we've got two lanes closed just by nuts for the services. I know you probably can't see a single thing because it's that dark. But I've to go pull into the service station now, get some fuel, and then I can hop straight back onto the motorway. I've seen on the signs as well, the matrix signs saying that junction 16 to 15 is closed for Stoke. So hopefully, well, it is going to be backed up anyway, isn't it, regardless, but we are coming off at the uh, Stoke Junctions anyway. I was hoping to come off on the 15 instead. But I'm going down the A50. And then M1. And then jumping straight round Leicester Ring Road. But well, traffic looks really backed up there, doesn't it? Currently quarter past five at the moment, and as you can see on the M6, top of the trailers there, the motorway is still backed right up and not really moving at the moment, unfortunately. Right then, let's see what it's like. Seems to be moving at least now. Do apologise if you literally can't see anything. If it is too dark, I might have to edit this little section out. Straight on, there we go, look at that. Flip the hazard lights on for a quick thanks for the trucker behind me. I'm not too sure whether it is roadworks or it might have been a bump because on the matrix signs I've only seen the junction 16 to 15 close, which is Stoke, so I could come off at 16 anyway, so that's not too bad. But earlier on it did say that the far two lanes had been closed. Maybe that's been reopened. Looking at it now, because it's traffic in the third lane. And so it begins. Three and a half miles away from the Stoke Junction. As you can see at the moment, it is just completely backed right up. Um, I need to try and get over actually if I can. Oh my word, that is really really a sea of red lights just there so if anyone will let me across again pull out on them. Thanks very much. My word, it is just completely backed right up. So I'm just getting in the lane nice and early so we can come straight off. It's currently half past five at the moment. Just creeping down the first lane at three miles per hour. <laughs> Hopefully it'll clear up shortly. 
it's 20 to 6 now so I'm hoping there might be reopening the motorway soon if so that should relieve a lot of this congestion and everybody's trying to get off at this next junction as well that's the problem It's just very, very slowly moving at the moment. It's just hit 6 a.m. now, and it seems traffic is starting to free up a little bit. So I presume the junction's been reopened now between 16 and 15. I'm going to stay on this junction now to come off because I need to go down the A500 and then jump off the A50. I still think this might be a little bit quicker this way instead of trying to sit for all the traffic on the M6 southbound to get to the next junction down. It's a little bit chaotic at the moment, isn't it, as you can see. Approaching the M1 south junction now, 24A on the M1. And I've got 70 miles still to go. Now, what's the M1 saying? Looks a little bit better than the M6, still heavy traffic. You can see it going over the bridge. Well, at least it's all flowing, so that's the main thing, isn't it? Still got two hours before I get there. So about halfway or such. And on the taco, I've got two hours and 24 minutes. So what I might do is take a 45 minute break a little bit nearer, probably down on the A47 somewhere. Try and find a lay by, just pull over there. Have 45 minutes, so that clears the working time and the working, uh, sorry, working time and driving time directives. So when I get to Peterborough, I've pretty much got a fresh four and a half hours to get the trailer, do everything I need to do and then start heading back at the moment the PDA has been quiet all the way down so I don't think there's any collections on at the moment but we'll call the office just before I leave just to double check if there is anything that needs to be coming back up it does look quite heavy there actually in front Overall, the M1 was actually not too bad. Been on there, came off, down one of the A roads for a little bit, just jumped onto the A6 now, going in, in towards Leicester. And from the A6, I'm going to try and cut across to the A47, and then just follow the A47 and straight down towards Peterborough. The place that I'm going to, I think it's just off. The A47 to be honest with you. Or is it just off the A1? I think it might connect onto the A1 to Peterborough. If your traffic was a little bit more free flowing, going past Birmingham and then onto the A14, then up the A1M to cut across to Peterborough, that wouldn't be a bad little route but unfortunately as we know Birmingham traffic a little bit heavy isn't it in the mornings it's currently quarter to eight at the moment still making pretty good progress for timing wise to get to the destination 48 miles left to go I don't know why voice control has just been knocked on pardon no nope, don't talk <laughs> pardon Stop talking to me, truck. Turn off. Cancel. Cancel. That's a bit odd. Anyways, where was I? What was I saying? <laughs> I can't remember now. Got sidetracked by the truck interrupting me. Due to get there, ten past nine currently. So I've kind of clawed back a little bit of timing from this morning's delay over on the M6. Which is good, that's what we want. Currently on the A47 and more traffic. I think it's going to be roadworks because there's no traffic on the other side of the road either. 
until now, so it looks like they've got lane closure. I've still got 16 miles to go until I'm at a destination and 25 minutes of driving to get there. I've currently got 43 minutes left on the tackle for driving time. So I'm just gonna try and get there and then I'll probably take a break on the way back. I've had a 15 minute break already. So I'll take 30 minutes and then I'll head over to the other yard where I need to collect the trailer. And I've been given a collection as well over at the sugar place that we dropped off a few weeks back. And it's supposedly in Kings Lynn, but it's PE33. So I don't know if it's just on the outskirts of Kings Lynn or in Kings Lynn itself. Or I'll map it later on. But I think I had a booking time at quarter to five. And it's currently 20 past nine. So hopefully that booking time is not, <laughs> it's not set in stone. Let's just say that, hopefully. Want to find a cheeky little lay by right by the first yard that I need to visit. Just so I can get the trailer number, get it booked in and out before collecting it from the other yard. It's half past 10 already as well. Today has absolutely flown by. Start at 4 a.m., left at about quarter to five because I had to get some ratchet straps, do the vehicle checks, etc. It's got a little bit held up then. And then been on the road since about, oh, about 20 to six, I think it was actually. Not 20 to 6, uh, 20 to 5. <laughs> so at 20 to 5, left the yard, been on the road since then. It's a good five hours anyway to get here. I had four minutes left on my driving time for the four and a half hours. And to be honest, I should have been here about an hour and a half ago. It's just all the traffic down the A47. I don't know what was causing all the backlogs. It wasn't any road works. But it's taking quite a lot while to get past that final little section. As you've seen earlier and then this morning on the m6 that put me back probably 40 minutes on its own and then i've had to take a full a 45 minutes break 50 and then a 30. your 45 minute breaks by the way guys can be broken up into two different sections if you want so instead of taking a full 45 in one go you got to do a 15 and then a 30 if you wanted to do that but it must be in that order though, 15 first and then a 30. Right, so I'm coming up to the estate now, where the little yard is. Well, I've got a bad feeling I'm not going to make it home tonight. This collection at the sugar place, it's probably about 40 miles from where I am now. And it's not quite in Kings Lynn, even though these address does say Kings Lynn. It's just south of there. It's probably in between Kings Lynn and Fetford. Right, so you're then all booked in. Now I just need to go to the other site so I can get the trailer itself. Have a look at some of these cars as I drive down here. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell they've been here for some time if the bushes are grown over them. <laughs> My word, how long does something have to be parked up in one place for it to be like that red car? Where it's just consumed by nature. Crazy that, isn't it? Damn it. The trailer itself is seven miles away. It's quite a shame you can't really just drive straight to the yard and then do the old bucking in process over there instead of coming to this one first. So seven miles away.
And about 20 minutes drive, I was just watching something up above then. Look at that, seven miles away and a 20 minute drive. Now that I've arrived, I just need to try and locate where the trailer is. Ah, oh, that could be it, right at the end. I think that might be it. That's not too bad if it is. Should be 43. Not 44, is it? Yep, 44, sorry, not 43. Oh, look at that, straight down at the end. Winning. Then next what we need to do is remember the word black but in reverse. So first it's K for kingpin and then you got the dog clip as well on there. And then we have A for airlines. <laughs> nice and easy going straight on. Try and work your way backwards and then forward so you don't get all your wires tangled up. And you can't go wrong with these as well. If you're worried about sticking them into the wrong one, because there is quite a few different leads to go in. If you look at this one, they represent what's on there. So you can't really put them in the wrong one. You can't go wrong, really. Raise the legs. Then finally, Push in the brake. Inspect the trailer, make sure there's no damage to it. Even though it is a brand new trailer, it looks quite nice actually. I like the colour scheme of that one. So we are actually part of the Irish Freight Solutions as well, SSO Logistics. So that's like the sister company. Tires are all in great condition, as you can see. No damage or anything whatsoever, and everything's all road legal. And then finally, reg plate. So let's not forget to stick the reg plate on before we drive away. Update the trailer market for the new trailer. Now the biggest problem I've got about picking up this new trailer is the state of the floor. It's caped in mud already. I've tried my best to try and avoid all the like, little wet patches of dirt, but unfortunately, not much I can do about this place. For the collection over at Peterborough, unfortunately, it's a one hour drive pretty much to get there. 38 miles. official you couldn't really write it so i've drove an hour and a bit out of the way from where i was uh peterborough to get here 
and unfortunately it's been collected this morning by Kent Foods. So the company we're doing it on behalf of, they have a habit of double booking things. Which unfortunately is not too great for me because I'm very, very tight on the driving time to try and get back. So I spoke to the office, they're trying to get it confirmed before I leave and then back up and go solo. Well, not solo, empty. I've got a different reference number, I've given it to him. It's the right one this time, so that's good. That's all right. However, it's a quarter to five booking. Yeah, I don't think um, I can get it much earlier. Hopefully I can. Um, at the moment, I've got to go across the reception, get booked in and get registered with the company doing like the insurance and site safety. So then I can go onto the Weybridge, speak to the Weybridge. Hopefully I can sweet talk him to try and get the load before quarter to five. If not, I'm going to be on 13 hours before I get loaded. Driver induction done. That has got to be the most tightest Weybridge I've ever drove on. And I think it just scuffed all the tyres on the new trailer. <laughs> Try to get around the corner. My word, I had to like back it up and then straighten it a little bit more. It's a little bit, a bit of a turn, you see, before you get onto the Weybridge. It was hard to get your trailer straightened up as much as you can. Okay, so I think I've just got to wait around this little section around here. So just go on to the right and then just park at the lay-by and wait for instructions. Looks like they could take me a little bit early. It's currently 20 to 2. Safety first. So at the moment I was waiting for the trailer to get loaded up. I've had to come over to some little waiting area like so as you can see down here, nice little chair over there on the corner. And you see big green netting as well, so nothing can injure you whilst you're waiting for your trailer to get loaded. Once it's been loaded, what I need to do is move the trailer forward into a different bay so then I can strap up the load to make sure it's nice and secure for our drive home. It's currently 20 past two, so they've not been too bad. They've been pretty fast loading it up and looks like they're on the last view already. You're done and finally ready to leave. The time is currently three o'clock just hit. It's gonna be five hours to get back to the yard where this is gonna be getting delivered. I've got four hours driving time left. Might be a little bit longer than five hours if you include all the traffic. Best way it's telling me to do is drop down to the A14, cutting across the near Cambridge area, cutting out onto the A14, cutting across, then jump onto the M1 North, going up, then through Stoke. But I'm going to weigh it up when I get to around the M1 area where it's carrying on straight up the M6 because there's more stops that I can stop off. Uh, for example, Stafford services are quite a good service, so I might stop there for the night. So I'm just going to wait up when I get to there and then decide whether I want to go up the M1 or through the M6. However, it just depends on traffic, really, getting past Birmingham. And in total, 212 miles to go. It really is in the middle of nowhere, this place. So it's quite interesting though, when you visit all the different factories, all the different locations. And that's one thing I love about driving as a job. One day I could be going to a farm, next day it could be a warehouse, day after that could be a sugar factory like I've just been to now. It's really interesting, isn't it? Just going somewhere different all the time, every day. You never know what things you're going to be seeing on the road. And I've pretty much seen everything, trust me. Uh, straight down the B road and then hopefully you'll get a bit better the roads because these are a little bit bumpy you can see a little bit wavy up ahead all the dips that's quite a cool sight there on the left hand side I feel full of sunflowers it looks really nice especially with all this weather coming on the sun and that don't know if the camera's picking them up right All there to the left. Looks very nice. The farmers out in the field there to the right. Looks like they got the potato picker out. They are cool machines and potato ones. I'll show you a little clip of 
one of them old previous video. Where was that Southport? And you got a sprayer in the left field there as well. Nice day for it. it certainly is. A nice day for a bit of farming. Generally, this is in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I don't have a clue where I am, and the roads are awful coming out of that factory then. Just driving down the road, and it's something, do you want kids, I'd love to do a beep, but the truck sounds like a car horn. I feel so bad when the kids are doing that little arm thing for the horn to beat them. If you had a big air horn, I would do it all day long. Unfortunately, it sounds like a mini. Looks like a truck, sounds like a mini. <laughs> Oh my word, it is bad. It is bad, the car horn on this. <clears throat> As we're saying though, um, the roads are awful coming out of that factory then. The road condition. So I always call them tram lines. So when you look on the road, you might be able to see it a little bit now. You've got the dark bit in the middle of the road and then you have the lighter bits on either side. And sometimes that dips because of all the wheels that have been driving on that little section all the time and every so often when you're driving down the road your wheels can get stuck on like the tram lines i call them and it just wants to pull you to one side and it's awful especially when you've got a ditch next to you and it's trying to pull you towards the ditch a little bit here now on the left hand side you'll be able to see them It's just pulling the truck in a little bit. So you gotta be careful when you're driving down roads and as the indentations. You drive too quick, it can cause an accident, so just take your time. No, oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, get some speed. Get some speed, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh my god, I'm sorry. Put it as the lights on, just to apologize to the van that's come speeding down around the corner. Not much I could do, sorry mate. There was no air in sight when I pulled off. <laughs> Not doing it on purpose, I've just got no power. <laughs> That's the biggest downside about these MEN trucks. They're really comfy, the beds are okay. I've got a big double bunk bed as well, so if you want to sleep on the top bunk, you can do. Um, plenty of headroom, got a fridge. Nice turning circle, nice drive overall, they just lack the power. It just needs that bit more torque when you got a heavy load. So I've got 24 tonne loaded on me at the moment. So it's a fairly heavy trailer. And I can feel it when I pull off. Just been on the phone to Mike in the office and I've been given the go ahead to use the tow road. So I can use the tow a little bit later on. Unfortunately, I have to pay for it myself, but then claim it back. It only takes about four or five days to come through. So it's not too bad. It's about like 20 quid or something. I hope it's about like 20 quid anyway. Luckily, I've just been paid. <laughs> I also would have been a bit uh, strapped, <laughs> literally. I've got 200 miles still to go. And hopefully, Traffic's not too bad if I'm using the M1, inside not the M1, the uh, tow road. Hopefully it'll be okay. I don't have to be back at our yard until half past six tomorrow, so the further I get north, the better. So if I start, let's say five o'clock in the morning, with an hour drive, that'll be all right. I don't mind that, that'll be okay. Just gotta try my best at the moment to get as much north as I can. Where I'm going round here, right round, jumping onto the A10. Come on! Oh my God, I'm losing power getting up that bit. It's not even a big hill. Pray for me if I get a giant hill that I've got to go up. <laughs> I've been rolling backwards at this rate. Got a crossing over here as well. Come 
always be prepared to stop just in case. Oh, got thrown around then. So much for hoping for good weather. This literally came out of nowhere. Just make sure you always go a little bit slower, keep distance in front of you a bit more as well. It's not fun when it's like this. My word, it is bouncing it down properly. Where has this came from? I know it's come from the sky before anybody says, but it was nice and sunny five minutes ago. Wow. Time is currently a quarter to five. It's gone really, really fast today. Coming up to 13 hours working. Does not feel it, it really doesn't. So it's when some people say to me, oh, 15 hours is well long. Trust me, when you're driving, especially doing HCV driving, 15 hours does not feel like 15 hours. It feels like 10 or 11 hours, maybe. It's strange, isn't it, when you're driving how fast time goes? I'm currently on the A14 in New Park, which is above the M11. And I'm follow, following this all the way down, past Kettering, all the way to Rugby on the M6. Then I can jump on the M6 toll road. And I'm hoping tonight I can get right up to hmm, where do I think I could get to hopefully Stafford it won't be too bad there if I get to Stafford I'm going to be starting at between 4 or 5 o'clock tomorrow so it'll be a 9 hour rest tonight it's not really too bad doing a 9 hour rest when you're in your truck because you don't really have to go anywhere all I have to do is walk to the services have a shower get myself sorted out and then jobs are good and really isn't it Plus, I can get a food voucher as well, so I get a £10 food voucher provided for staying out tonight. But, however, the only problem is with a food voucher is the current diet that I'm on. I'm struggling to think what to have to dinner because I'm currently on the carnivore diet. Now, I'm only doing it for the month of September. I do it every six months or so. I'll try and do between two to four weeks. What I try and do the full September this time around if I can. So I'm eating anything that's meat related or eggs and fish. Pretty much anything comes from any animal real. I'm not doing it too strict so I'm still having coffee. A bit of milk inside the coffee. I'm not going to go um, to town on it. But it's just a lot lower carb diet really isn't it. To be fair, I feel a lot less bloated, even after two days. So I feel like it works. Let me know down below if you've tried the carnivore diet before yourself. If so, how did it go? How did you find it? Sat nav is currently struggling to find where I am. Because this part of the A14 is new. <laughs> So I've got to sat up I'm in the middle of a field. So I need to come off for Huntington. So I need to make sure I don't miss that junction. So I can carry it straight up then towards Kettering. Approaching the M6 toll road now. And the time is just hit six o'clock. So I'm on currently hour 14. Doesn't feel like it though. So that's good pretty wide awake at the moment since all I've eaten today sausage and bacon <laughs> on their own as well no bread just been snacking throughout the day instead and what well, I feel great for it being honest with you I've got 57 minutes left driving time and 57 minutes to be exact of working time as well so hopefully I can get to Stafford services by going on the toll road should be able to get there within the hour, I think. Let's go check these services quickly, because if these are any good, I might be able to stay here instead. Um, actually, can the truck stay here? 
I'm sure trucks can stay here, can't they? Yeah, I thought I'd seen a truck parking. So I've never stayed here in a truck, I don't know what it's like, hopefully it should be okay. Being on a toll road. And then I can leave in the morning. Bright and early. HGV, £33, bloody hell. See what the parking situation is like. Um, probably pretty busy. <laughs> yeah, pretty busy. Ah, space right there. Look at that. That'll do me nicely. Well, it's quite a few different spaces actually. So. I've got to go around, see why I can get one to go straight out instead. That's out, mate. So I'll try and not get blocked in, you see, because I need to be out bright and early. Just like that, that's me done for the night. Quite a nice little bridge there, going from the little truck park to the services. I have stopped at these services a few times in the car, driving past, but I've never actually stayed here as a truck. So hopefully it's gonna be nice, safe, secure for tonight. No fuel theft or trailer damage or anything, fingers crossed. But the service themselves seem to be pretty nice. And that is also another 15 hours done. Hopefully that cloud stays away as well because it's quite dark there, isn't it? And hopefully we've been on the toll road, it should be pretty quiet as well. Which is good. Nice and fancy private little booth for the evening. I've got my white hot chocolate with a shot of gingerbread. And unfortunately, the diet's gone out the window, so I've gone for um, a paprika wrap from Leon. So that's me for the rest of the evening, just relaxing nice hot chocolate do the vlog watch a film and yeah just hope the internet's going to be quick enough to get it uploaded anyway on time if not it might be a little bit late if i finish late tomorrow as well um yeah another 15 hours done job's good in so i'm gonna leave the video there if you did enjoy it don't forget to like comment subscribe and i'll see you again next time as always stay safe out there folks bye for now